video to help you with uh, the next two sections dealing with housing costs and comparing housing and renting. Uh, first part, housing costs. We're going to go through some stuff. Uh, some of the costs, extra costs that you could have in housing is uh, stuff like utilities, some kind of public service, uh, such as telephone, electricity, water, and gas, extra charges as far as your house, uh, what you need to pay when you live somewhere, and telephone, telephone might not be, a lot of people don't have a landline now, so that might not be one of the things that you actually have, but for this book it is. Uh, so some just housing costs that you have, you got your mortgage payment of course, but then you also have insurance, real estate taxes, electricity, maybe heating fuel if you heat with propane or natural gas, water, uh, internet, cable, maybe your cell phone, uh, any kind of repairs, so on, so on, so on. Those are all extra housing costs. When you're looking at housing costs, different things will tell you, or different setups will tell you different things. This book deals with 35%. It says that your total monthly housing cost should be less than 35% of your gross pay. So if your gross pay is $1,000 and it's, you got 35%, remember we want to bump that over two places, so it's 0.35. We multiply this by 0.35, we get 350. So all your other housing costs, or all your housing costs totaled up, should be less than $350. Uh, so you want to decide that. Um, some things will say, I think when I looked at it, I went off of 30% or 25%. Um, so you, you have to make that decision on what percentage is best for you, but this book uses 35%. Shouldn't spend more than 35% on your of your total pay on your housing costs. Security deposit, we talked a little bit last time about a security deposit. A security deposit is a uh, one-time payment made when signing a lease or a rental agreement. Uh, it's used to pay for cleaning the apartment at the termination of the rental agreement. Uh, to change, it also could be used to change the locks, to repair any damage to the place. So. If you tear up the place, then they're going to use your security deposit to fix it. Um, you can get the security deposit back when you move out if you leave the place in really, really good uh, standing or you know really good shape. Um, just depends on how long you live there. If you live there for a long time, then they're probably going to keep your security deposit because of the normal wear and tear that you have on the rental place uh, to fix those things or up to update things. So that's what a security deposit is. Your average monthly cost, all you're going to do is you're going to total up the annual cost and divide by how many months there are. We're going to do this on the second half of the assignment. The first half, uh, they give you everything in monthly cost. Um, remember, if it's annual cost, then that means there's 12 months. So when you're doing this, you're taking this total and just dividing it by 12. If it's uh, if everything's given you given to you as an annual cost, the assignments on page 396, three through seven, and page 400, four through seven. We're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do them. I'm going to help you out with them on this video. Uh, 396, 3 through 7, we're going to start there. So get your books out and we'll go through and, and sort of do some of them together and, and I'll leave you some things that you have to do on your own. So 396, problem 3. They say 
Dan, uh, Dan's monthly gross pay is $5,100. Find the total expenses for April was Dan within the 35% guideline. So to find his total expenses, they give us that chart over there and we add them all up. And when I add them all up, I get $1,703 and 40 cents. So those are his total expenses. They say Dan's gross pay was $5,100 per month. All I'm gonna do is take that number times 0.35. And I'm gonna do this first one for you. Then I'm gonna leave this last part for you to do on your own for the rest of the problems. So 5,100 times 0.35, that gives me 1,785. Now when we look at this, this number, this is our first answer first of all. This number should be less than that number. So what he actually spent should be less than the 35%, which is right here. And the second part of our answer is, is this number less than this one? And our answer this time is yes. So the second part of your answer, you're just gonna put yes or no. This is the first part of your answer. That's the second part. Number four. says Joan Ryder's monthly gross pay is $5,525. Find the total expenses for January. Was Joan within the 35% guideline? So I look at that chart over there and I add up all those numbers and I get $1,902.18. So that's our first answer. Then I take her pay, 5,525, and I times it by 0.35. And this is the part I'm gonna let you guys do on your own. All right, so you find this number, just grab your calculator and multiply that, figure out what that answer is, and then you compare these two answers. Um, we got this answer, it should be if it's if this answer is less than this one over here, then you put yes. If this answer is bigger than this answer over here, then you put no. So the second part of your answer is either going to be yes or no. You have to make that decision. So multiply this and compare it to the original answer you got here. Their actual expenses should be less than this. If they're not, then you put them. Number five. Frank and Yvette Shelby have a condo. The monthly gross income uh, for Frank is 1860 and Yvette is 1900. Find their total expenses for March and their housing costs within, or are their housing costs within the 35% guideline? For their combined income. So I total up that chart they give us there and when I total it up I get $1,288.96 I think. So that's our first answer. Then on this one, a little different on this one, we have to add together their uh, incomes so we got 1860 plus 1900, and that gives me 067, 3760. Then I take that 3760 and I times it by the 0.35. And you're going to take that answer. And again, this answer should be, if they fall within the guidelines, it should be less than this. So you're going to compare these two answers. If this one is less than this, then you say yes. If it's if this one is more than this, then your second part of your answer is no. So you make that decision. Number six. Uh, 
Farrah Pigston recorded her housing expenses for the month of August. Uh, mortgage payment $347.90, insurance $52, taxes $184, electricity $64.40, phone service $33.50, fuel $38.25, water $27.44 and repairs $179.87. Her monthly gross pay is $2,150. What is her total monthly cost? So we're gonna add all those numbers up that they gave us there, except for, of course, her gross pay. And when I add them all up, I get $927.36. So that's our first answer. Her monthly gross pay is $2,150. We take that times 0.35, and you're going to find that answer. Grab your calculator, and you can find that answer. And again, this answer is less than that answer. We want it to be less than that answer. Then we put yes. If it's not less than that answer, then we put no. So you have to figure out this number and the yes or no uh, for your answer. Number seven, David and Helen Voss have a combined monthly gross income of $5,750. Their records show for the last year that they paid $10,789.20 in mortgage payments, $581 for insurance premiums, and $2,685 in taxes. In addition, they had the annual expenses listed at the left. So this time, instead of giving you everything as a monthly cost, they give you everything as uh, an annual cost. So we have to add them all up and then we're gonna divide it by 12. So I add up all that chart and all the numbers that they told us uh, in the problem. And when I add all those up, I get 28,225 dollars and 12 cents and we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by 12 so that we can make it a monthly cost so when i divide that i get two thousand three hundred and fifty two dollars and nine cents that's our first answer and then we look at their annual salary or not their annual salary i'm sorry their monthly salary it tells us it's $5,750. We're going to take that times 0.35. We get that answer. This answer over here again, if it's less than that, then we put yes. If this answer is more than this answer, then we put no. They didn't stay within the 35% guideline. So that's the first page. Flip over to the second page, page 400. On page 400, we're just going to do that little chart there, four through seven. So you're going to have an A answer and a B answer for each question. Uh, it says for problems four through nine, calculate A, the total annual cost, and B, the monthly cost. So we're going to add up uh, the total annual cost, and we're going to have to divide them by 12 to get the monthly cost. Uh, now, in that chart, notice that the first column is your monthly payment, whether you're owning or renting. And so it gives that to you as a monthly cost. All the rest of them are annual costs. So there's a couple different ways we could do it. We could multiply that first one by 12 every time. And, uh, and actually, that's what we'll have to do. So we'll just do it that way. So that first column, you're going to have to multiply by 12. So on the first one, I'm going to take 12 times 600. Then you just add the other stuff in. Plus 1,900 plus 660 plus 1,540 plus 2,840. 
So we're going to add all those up. And if you just type it into your calculator just like that, 12 times 600 plus 1900 plus 660 plus 1540 plus 2840, I end up with 1000 or I'm sorry $14,860 that's your oops that's your first answer 14860 that's part A then to get part B we just take that answer 14860 and we divide it by 12 you already got that number on your calculator so just hit divided by 12 and I get about $1,238.33. So that's part of the answer to part B. Number five, again, you type in six times 450 plus, and then we we'll just go through the chart, uh, 350. Some of them are zero, so we don't have to put those in. Plus 2160. I typed all that in my calculator and I got $7,910. That's the answer to part A. Part B, you take that and you divide it by 12. So if I type in 7910 divided by 12, I get $659 and about 17 cents. That's the answer of part B. Number six. This time it's uh, 12 times 1450. Plus, again, a lot of zeros on this one, so plus 720 and plus 3200. Type all that into my calculator and let's see, 12 times 1450 plus 720 plus 3200 and I end up with 2100 or 21,000 sorry 1 21,320 that's the answer to part A you take that number 21,000 for part B 21,320 and you divide it by 12 so divided by 12 and I end up with $1,776.67. Number seven. Seven thirty-eight eighty. So we've got twelve times seven thirty-eight eighty. Plus 2000 plus 651 plus 650 plus 2210. So I type all that into my calculator 12 times 738.80 plus 2000 plus 651 plus 650 plus 2210 and I end up with 14376.6 remember put a zero on the end there that's your first answer then you take that answer 
part B, and you divide it by 12, and I get $1,198.05. That's the answer to part B. This is their monthly expense. These are their annual expenses. So that's all the assignment. Turn it in in the metal tray before you walk out. Probably have a test next week over all this stuff about housing and different things.